Hi, I'm Alex Zaves and welcome to the Arts and Crafts Show. Today I wanted to talk about how I became a full-time artist and what it took for me to do it and when I did it. And this is now I'm going back more than 40 years. Um, I started when I was in high school, technically speaking, when I was about 16 years old. And I was in my uh, folks' house, and my parents had all these little little candles that were in a box, little pieces of candle that were left over. And I don't know what drove me to do this, but at that time what I did was I took all those little candles, and I was going to make one big candle out of it. So I melted all, down, melted all that wax down, and I put a, a candle in the middle of a milk carton, and... Well, I took that melted wax, I poured it in over the top of uh, inside that box and let it dry. And I had a pretty nice big candle from all those little wasted pieces of wax candles that were left over. And I thought that was pretty cool, actually. So I really liked that. And it was funky looking, but back in the 1960s when I did this, and I was in high school back then, uh, funky was in, like tie-dye t-shirts or pottery that wasn't quite oval or round, vases that, you know, were kind of cool to look at. And, and basically that was the beginning stages of the arts and crafts world. Anyway, we were all just sort of starting out. And, but, okay, so I, what I did next was I really liked that. So I went to the library and I got a book out on how to make candles. And they showed basically what I needed to do, which I had done on my own, just out of just thinking about how it worked. It's not that difficult. It's pretty simple when you think about it. But they showed me I'd have to get wax and wick, and I did that. I went to the hobby shop there. I bought an 11-pound slab of wax, some wicking, and some molds, three different kind of molds, and some coloring. And I made some candles. But that's it. I mean, I, that was all my money was put into that. So what I did is that I took the, the candles that I had made and I went to high school with my books underneath one arm and a box of candles in the next. And I would sell it to the students at the school. Um, a lot of them wanted me to put a, a perfume into the wax, so I went later on and put perfume in the wax. And back then, you know, they put the perfume in the candle so that they could hide the, the marijuana smoke in the bedroom. A lot of times we were saying, I'm buying this for my big sister, my big brother in college, and, you know, it's a gift for them. But, you know, anyway, I was, you know, selling candles every day at school, only taking three or four candles every day. And... I had to come home at night every every few nights and I would go ahead and make some more candles when I was in high school. Well, you know, the high school season uh, was over for the for the summer vacation and well, my business stopped at that point. I took another job and you know, when high school started up again the following September, I didn't start back into the business again and and so Seven, eight years later, passed by after job and schools, and I uh, ended up in San Francisco. And I was in San Francisco, I think it was the summer of 76, and I took a job there in San Francisco uh, as a community organizer. And at that time, uh, it was a pretty good job, but me getting around San Francisco in July, was I was on a motorcycle. And a lot of times I would get home at night, and it was cold didn't really like that very much, but I managed it. But as it became October, November, and December, it was really cold. And I decided I wanted to go to someplace warmer, and I did. I, I had some savings, and I sold my motorcycle for an airplane ticket, and I took a one-way ticket over to Hawaii. And I was able to bring in the new year, 1977, in Waikiki Beach, which I thought at that time was pretty cool, and I enjoyed it. But I knew I had to get another job. It was at this point that uh, it was difficult to find a job in Hawaii 40 some years ago because it was, uh, I was considered a Haole, which was a white person from the mainland of the USA. And there was some conflict between the Hawaiians and the white people, the Haoles. But I managed to get a job as a tree trimmer and I cut trees and um, 
but mostly I was climbing coconut trees, which I didn't like very much because you have to go up about 30, 40, 50 feet, cut off the palm fronds, knock out the uh, coconuts out there and let them drop down to the ground because uh, it was a danger for the tourists. And But at the same time, the coconut trees were really dirty. A lot of rats made their nest up there. It was never quite you know, a good job. I like prefer the tree trimming side of it. It was a lot cleaner. So I had that job for about seven or eight months, and then I was laid off. Okay, again, laid off again. I've been, and I'm thinking, all right, what do I do now? I went over to the unemployment office. They gave me three months of unemployment, which gave me the opportunity to look for a new job. It was at this point I decided I would go back to what I knew about eight years ago, and that was candle making. So I run around to all the shops and I looked in all the areas, all the tourist stores and uh, everywhere. And I was noticing all the different style of candles that they had. And then I went to the library once again and I went and got some books out and I read up on candle making and styles and how to make them. And I recognized that there was this one style that they were making sand candles. But everywhere I went in Hawaii, there were no sand candles. So that's what I focused on. You, you make a mold in the sand and you pour the hot wax in and you've got a sand candle. Now Hawaii is full of sand and not only that, they've got the kind of the brownish tan sand that we're familiar with, but they had one sand there that was pure white on white, like white bread white. And that was great because I could carve into that and I could, you know, it was very fine sand and I could carve into that right through the sand into the candle wax and I can make designs so that when the candle was lit it would light up and you could see all the designs that I had made on the uh, to the from the carvings and also what I didn't carve some sand candles was I was able to airbrush in the outside and that was a great contrast that white on white sand for and I would make designs from airbrushing painting on the outside palm trees um, Aloha Hawaii and was great. I was making candles. I was going to the flea market, which is what Hawaii had at the time when people wanted to go buy anything. There was just flea markets. And there was this one arts and craft show in December. So I joined the Pacific Handcrafters Guild and I was able to get in and I did that one craft show in December. Uh, at the beginning of December, but it was great. People would go buy things for Christmas. A lot of the shoppers, the tourists were there, and I would make enough money just from that one show. I, I was could cover all my bills for three or four months. So, and then I was still doing the the flea markets in in Hawaii. Also, um, Aloha Stadium was opening up a brand new uh, marketplace not far from Pearl Harbor near the Pearl Ridge Shop Shopping Center, for those of you who know Hawaii, and I was in on the ground floor on that. When I first started, there was just a few dozen people, but I got the primo space, the number one space uh, in, uh, in, the, in that new market. And as it grew, it went almost all the way around Aloha Stadium, flea market. So I was doing that. Plus, I was selling my candles to a couple of uh, candle shops in the Ala Moana Shopping Center. So I was doing well. I, had the, I was the only one making sand candles in Hawaii. There were other candles being made and eventually down the road, Harry Krishnas came in and they started doing fancy candle work and selling it very, very cheap. And that was my competition later on down the road. So what I did was when I joined the Pacific Handgrafters Guild, I was in it for a couple of years. I got deeply involved. I became president of the organization for two years and I organized uh, three more shows, one every quarter in Hawaii, and two at Kapiolani Park and one in Ala Moana Park, for those of you who know the area. And I was also did a gallery, a 10-day gallery show in Ala Moana Center, which at that time was one of the largest um, malls in the country. So Hawaii was very good to me. I did very, very well. And I started my business from being able to have a block of time, three months, um, 
paid for by unemployment, which was half from the uh, employer and half from my wages. And I was able, I was able to be able to stop my unemployment before the end of the three months. I felt pretty proud of that at the time as I, my business took off. But it also means when you start to take your business off like that, you're not working your eight hour job as if you're being employed by somebody else. You are your boss. You have to work the, the 10, 12, 15 hours and you worry about the, you know, the bills and the, you know, where you're going to sell your work and collecting money from the, uh, from the, from the different stores that you're selling to because they don't always want to pay on time. And there's all that part of having to go back and forth. Where's my money? And, um, so I had worked my way up from just a, a 55 pound box of wax to the point a couple of years later, I was buying wax by the ton and delivered to my door and I was making sand candles. And from that, I expanded to bigger and better sizes of candles and my business grew and other candle makers came to the uh, art shows. And at one time we had uh, seven candle makers throughout the art show. Candles were big back then. And, um, and I just, you know, had a wonderful time in Hawaii making candles and that was my business and that's how I got started off. So I, I had that block of time. I had the experience from when I was 16 years old. I had the confidence from then and that's how uh, I got started in my own business. 40 years later, I'm still doing the arts and crafts show, but I'm now I'm doing metal work and I can talk about this at another time, how candles started to slowly phase out, you know, the larger businesses came in, they were making candles, and uh, I sort of got pushed out. I needed to find a new craft, a new art to move into. But that's a, a story for another time. So give me a subscribe, a thumbs up, please. Hit the little bell. And my next video, um, I'll, I'll ha we'll be talking about uh, some other important things about the arts and craft world and my experience over the last 40 years. And my I've I've attended at least 1,400 craft shows. So um, just want to share this information and I hope that you're able to, you know, share back with me what you think in the comment section below. Thanks very much. Bye.